All right, to pick up where we left off today in class, we're going to be looking at a few different physics problems. The first one we're going to look at is how to determine the acceleration of an object. Uh, now, a rightward force of 302 newtons is applied to a 28.6 kilogram crate to accelerate it across the floor. The coefficient of friction between the crate and the floor is 0 0.750. Determine the acceleration of the crate. Our first step to do this is there's a lot of different pieces that's going to help us if we prioritize the pieces or if we compartmentalize them and write them down first. So writing down everything that we know is going to be beneficial to us. So we know that the force that's applied is equal to 302 newtons. We know the mass of our crate is equal to 28.6 kilograms and we know the friction coefficient is equal to 0 0.750. Now, now that we know this, we're able to do um, our force diagram. Our force diagram is going to have a force applied that is greater than our friction force because we are accelerating. That's a key word in this problem. Since we're accelerating, the friction force is less than the applied force. So when solving this equation we first need to look at um, the applied force so that we're able to backwards solve for different pieces so we know that the applied force or the rightward force is 302 newtons so what we need to solve for now would be the force of gravity this bottom one the force of gravity F gravity is equal to the mass of our crate times the gravitational acceleration the mass of the crate is 28.6 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. When you multiply those numbers together, you will get 280.28 newtons. Now we're going to plug in 280.28 down here, and we can also write it up top. We can write it here, 280.28. Now you may be asking yourselves why we can do that, and it's because we're talking about an object that is not accelerating in an upward motion or a downward motion. It's moving left to right. Therefore, the force of gravity is equal to the normal force or the upward force. So, now that we know those two, we're left with the force of friction, and we need to calculate that. The formula that we're going to use to calculate the force of friction is uh, the force of friction is equal to uh, the friction coefficient times the force of gravity that we just calculated. We're going to plug in the friction coefficient, 0 0.750, multiply it by 280.28 newtons, and when you multiply those together, you should get 210.21 newtons. And this is our friction force. So we can get rid of our question mark since we just solved, and it's 210.2 newtons. Alright, now that we have our friction force and we already knew our applied force, we're able to solve for F net, our net force, which is from our original equation. Um, Newton's second law says that F net is equal to mass times acceleration, and we'll need this formula to solve for the acceleration. So, in order to do that, we need to first calculate F net. We don't know that right now. So, F net is equal to the force applied minus the force of gravity. Ah, uh, force of gravity, excuse me, the friction force. So, let's plug in what we know. We know the force applied is 302 newtons, and we know that the friction force is what we just calculated is 210.21 newtons. When you subtract those numbers, you should get 91.79 newtons. All right, we've calculated F net now. Now, we can go back to this formula and we can solve backwards for acceleration. Since we know the mass and we now know the total force that's acted upon our crate, we're able to solve for acceleration. So we're going to plug in 91.79 newtons, set it equal to mass, which was 28.6 kilograms, and then we're going to multiply that by the acceleration. Now, simple algebra, you're going to divide out 28.6 kilograms divided by 28.6 kilograms and when you divide those numbers into each other you will get 
two meters per second squared is equal to the acceleration. And that is our final answer. That is the acceleration of the crate. So you had a lot of different pieces that you have to keep up with here. You first have to figure out what you're going to solve for using our force diagram. Once you set up and labeled the force diagram properly, it's going to help you solve for what has been missing. Okay? So it's imperative that you guys set up the force diagram. And then from there, you should be able to figure out what else you need to solve for.